I think it's fair to say the world is reeling today uh, at the loss of Whitney Houston. Yeah. An amazing voice mm. uh, and one of those voices that crosses all generations. Absolutely. Like even young people knew of the bodyguard and the song and maybe they grew up listening to their parents hearing these albums or... Uh, so it's just such a bizarre sense of loss, but not an inevitable one. No, which is one of the saddest things that uh, everybody acknowledged that she was a superstar and yeah. one of the finest voices I think our generations had, but she also was a very troubled person. Yeah. She came here, I think it was last year, thanks to our next guest, uh, Andrew McManus, who was the pro- promoter who brought her out. Good morning. Good morning. Um, and at the time, Andrew, you'd have to say that she was not treated very kindly by audiences here in Australia. Look. I'd be honest with you, I myself had put a blanket on doing any interviews or anything because, you know, the media in Australia has been pretty brutal Mm. to a lot of people I know, and I'm one of them. And so when this came up yesterday and there's so many people wanting me to say something, I felt uh, the need to basically to clear some of the air the way that media did treat her. Mm. Um, And I remember having breakfast with her one morning in Sydney uh, and it was not long after the Brisbane show. And uh, we are sitting there, and I just said to her, look, you know, Whitney, I'm really sorry, and the Australian media has become, you know, you, you have become this fodder. Yeah. And it was like a, a frenzy. And she said, Andrew, if this is what God's got for me, that's my whack. I'm not worried. I'm comfortable in my own skin, mm. and I leave everything on the stage every night. And... Yeah, it was just her resilience was just quite so, amazing. Well, it, it, that sounds to me like someone who's pretty much got things together. Oh. In, in fact, in a very comfortable place with what they've been through. She was. She she was happy. She was bubbly. Uh, Bobby Christina was down here with her. Her two sisters were with her. Were, his, were with her, and throughout the whole time that because I went on the whole tour, and yeah. especially when the media started getting um, like nasty. A perfect example is when she got off the plane in Brisbane the first time, the media had already made a decision they were going to fry her Mm -hmm. and tried to say that she made some comment like, get out of my way. She never did that. We're standing there with her. So they're looking for trouble. They they were, Houston, we have a problem Mm -hmm. as the headline, and it was already printed the week before we got here. So during that entire tour, did you witness any problems, any substance abuse, any fallovers in terms of uh, some of her demons? The only time we had a reason to have any doctor or anything involved with the whole tour mm. was when she actually said to me, my throat's starting to get a little, you know, a little sore and tight, mm. and we got her some cortisone. Right. And that was it. And not one, and look, we went out in the harbour for Bobby Christina's birthday, and the only thing that you could say remotely... Um, Non, you know, non health wise, was mm. champagne. Right. So that then is one of the saddest things about this loss is that she seemed to have got her life back together. What? Where were you yesterday? Did you get a phone call from someone to alert you to the loss? I, I actually, um, you know, because you know, we all know Melbourne yesterday's weather was uh, mm. playing havoc. So I was actually indoors and uh, I was on the lounge watching, um, just flicking through channels, and I flicked past Sky. Mm. Right. And came up and went, you know, wow. And then all of a sudden, a friend of mine from Sydney, Grant Vandenberg, rang, and he was the first one. And then he said, get ready, because everyone wants to talk to you. And it has been, as I said, originally I was going to say nothing, and then I felt compelled to actually try to defend some of the things that were said about her when she was here, because they were, it was just unfair. Right, and, and you she, obviously, I mean, this is a, a situation where you weathered, what, $1.2 million loss on that tour... After people well, demanded so much... Look, uh, I've got to be honest different. with you, that's, again, a beat-up by the press. Oh, okay, so I thought and that was a direct quote from you. So no, it was, that was a comment around a period a period of time and a period of of tours that and projects that we had on. Right. And it was a combination thereof. Um, and that's it, that, again, is, is not right. Yes, we had some inter, um, refunds that were made or bought upon because of the Brisbane fiasco. Right. Mm. But then by the time we got to Sydney, the tickets started moving again. Right. And there was just so much love in that room when she actually went to hit the big note mm. and I'll always love you. Mm. That the crowd just, it was like, I still remember it. His hair's on the back of your neck type wow. stuff. Yeah. Where the whole crowd just stood up as one and gave a standing ovation. She hadn't even finished the song, but she hit the note. Well, 
One of the saddest things we've just learnt this morning is that her daughter, 18-year-old daughter, Bobby Christina, has been taken out on yeah, a stretcher, that. apparently, from the hotel. Um, you witnessed their relationship because she was... Well, as I said, it was more like a sister relationship mm. than a mother-daughter relationship. And they were inseparable the whole tour. Mm. Um, and I can imagine vividly now her going hysterical, trying to get in to see her mother. Mm. And I can understand why the security wouldn't want her to because it would be a horrific... Yes, and obviously concept of possibly a mark. crime scene. And oh, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I absolutely understand how she'd be feeling. Mm. So for you, personally, do you stay away or will you go over for a funeral? I mean, it's um, a very difficult time for you too. Look, I was a promoter and being a promoter, it was like when we toured Pavarotti and when he died and we were invited to go over. Right. But I, did, I just didn't think it was appropriate. Um, sure, it just sounds like you, you create a bit of a bond with her when the, when the media turned... Well, we did, and you know, and it's been a horrible day today, and for us to be standing here having to talk about this situation, um, I haven't made my mind up yet. I don't okay. know. I may, I may not. I don't know. Well, thank you so much for taking time to at least speak to us. No, and, it's a pleasure. And I hope it helps for you to put that record straight. Well, I hope we can. I hope we get mm. it across the public that she was a decent person, and if, if all the, the, the small window of six weeks that I had to spend with her, I found her to be a warm, loving, caring mother that actually gave it her all. And as she said to me, it's all on the stage when I leave. And every mm. night when she come off, she was gone. You know, she was mm. exhausted. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Andrew McManus, thanks for your time this Absolute morning pleasure. on that and Joe Show. 7.33, it's the final.